Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm back with another um, letter from Dawn. It came in today at 6.41 a.m. I didn't really feel led to share the last one. It had a big, um, like one of them that just submits now and then, and I just didn't agree with it at all. But anyway, we'll go on to this one, okay? And then I'll be caught up on these letters. And then there's a couple videos I want to watch to see if I want to share them. Okay. See, that's what takes the time. When people send me a link to a video that's more than a couple of minutes, like 20, 30 minutes, I got to watch them before I share them. Usually, except for what I did yesterday, I went and shared Minister Paul's because that was an important subject. It might have been the day before. I'm losing track of time. Anyway... Here we go. The first one is Small Straws and a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get a drink of water. When you are devalued or belittled, your tendency might be to retaliate and give it back. But the right thing to do is to take this and every opportunity to express my love. You have received forgiveness to cover all of your sins. And it is a righteous act to forgive those who have sinned against you. You have heard the adage... To err is human, and to forgive is divine. Exhibit my heart in every situation. The verse put with it is Matthew 6, 14-15, and this comes from the middle of the Lord's Prayer. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. Oh, wait, it may not, wait, Matthew 6, 4. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So, I no, I made a mistake there. This is not from the middle of the Lord's Prayer. But it's similar. As it says, Forgive me, Lord, for my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. This is saying, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. That's a big deal. That means you still have that blot of stain on your heart. And if there's more than one person you haven't forgiven, then that's two blots or three. Is your heart half black because you can't forgive? Think about it. Okay, now this one is uh, given to Bev Robinson and dated April 17th. A breakthrough is coming. You have been going through a hard time. Now remember, some of these are not meant for everybody. They're meant for those they're meant for. So see if this is meant for you. You have been going through a hard time. You knew I was in control, but you did not know which way events would end. You know the value of surrendering it all to me and letting me fight the battle. But an, uh, but an area of unknown made it real hard. And suddenly, with no warning, events will change for the better. It will be a big relief. I always do what is best for you. Yes, he does. Romans 8, 28-29 from the New Living Translation 
There's a 2 behind it, so I guess that means 2nd edition. NLT 2. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Again, that was given to Bev Robinson. You know, I think there's there's people in like the church churches that believe in Calvinism that take that out of context. For God knew His people. I think in the King James, it's foreknew His people in advance, and He chose them to become like His Son. so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Okay, like my nephew, he, he was, I don't know, maybe God delivered him out of that way of thinking, but the people who believe in that believe that God chose ahead of time those who were going to be saved. And at the point they realized that, they gave their heart to the Lord, not knowing that yet, joined a church that believed in Calvinism. This is my nephew's story. I know, not that he told it to me, just what I overheard at a family reunion several years ago. And that nothing he does is going to change that. He can... Uh, Fail to repent, fail to stop drinking. Not that he was an alcoholic, but I don't think there's anything wrong with a beer. Now and then, at a family reunion or a birthday party for your grandpa, and he loves beer, so he tells the waitress, hey, bring us a couple pitchers of beer. So, okay, you have a glass. And you're not an alcoholic, and you don't feel you're going to offend any brother or sister who thinks it's a horrible sin for Christians to drink. Now, they, the way the Bible puts it is you are free to do what you want. But not everything is acceptable, but not everything is beneficial. Is how Paul put it. So in the subject of, of drinking, I don't think there's anything wrong with a glass of wine or a glass of beer or even a mixed drink. If you're at a Christmas party, uh, which we're not supposed to do that anyway. Oh, that's a hard subject to get into. Forget I even mentioned Christmas. Because some people just think it's wrong to even celebrate it. And I think if you have the faith to know you're all right with it, you're better off than the one who does it thinking, oh, is it all right if I do this? I put the tree up, I bought the presents, and I'm serving wine at dinner. I'm not even sure if it's all right. That person's in trouble because they're not doing it in faith. If you can't have faith that it's okay for Christians to celebrate a holiday with their family because they all still believe in it, if you don't have the faith to do that, then don't host the dinner. Don't do it. I mean, I'm not... Okay, that's all I have to say about that. This is not all about Christmas. I was just trying to give an example. The Lord was saying, don't eat meat sacrificed to idols if it will offend your brother. All right? So why have a glass of wine or a glass of beer in front of your brother who's trying to quit? Because he believes it's a sin. Don't do it. You don't need it. 
tell him you'd rather have a, a glass of punch or a soda or a glass of water. It's even better. All right, let's move on. Okay. Whatever you're convicted to do, do it. If you're convicted to not do something, don't do it. Okay, you know, whatever you do, do it in faith. Whatever you don't do, do it out of faith. Okay, the next one. There is no need to get all worked up and become anxious about difficulties you are facing. Oh, this is the one I got a little Bible study pulled up for you. All right, let me repeat that. There is no need to get all worked up and become anxious about difficulties you are facing. For some reason... You have a form of memory loss concerning my breakthroughs for you. You easily fall into the trap of fear. Have those elements of concern and apprehension accomplished anything? It might have produced a few wrinkles or a gray hair or two. Has your nervousness solved anything? My timing is perfect. My will is spot on. Enter into my rest. The verse given is Psalm 1830 from the New King James Version. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is is proven he is a shield to all who trust in him I have to pull my computer cord out of my chair okay I had to put my legs down okay or yeah down I can only have them up for so long and I only want them down for so long oh never mind me okay <clears throat> except about this all right, so they gave his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. That was given to Kevin Robinson. And that's also true of Psalm 91, talking about his shield. His, shield, his truth is a shield for us. Okay, now what I have pulled up here is from Matthew 6 25 I, I typed in is worry a sin because people say it's a sin to worry this is the verse that came up and it doesn't directly say it's a sin but I think there are other verses that might actually state it that it is so if you can pull them up please put them in the comments this is uh, titled, in, my, in the NASB, it's titled, The Cure for Anxiety. Because some people might be getting a little anxious about World War III happening before we're out of here. It's not going to happen. And worrying about it isn't going to help. Look, if you were to die today before the rapture, you realize you would close your eyes here and you would wake them up immediately in heaven. To live is Christ, to die is gain, Paul said. To live is to be able to serve Christ. He worded that kind of weirdly. That was King James Version. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. So don't fear. All right, let me read this. For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life. And the footnote says literally soul. About your soul. As to what you will eat or what you will drink 
nor for your body. Yeah, your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. That's where you get worry from. What you will eat, what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look, I, did I tell you this is Matthew chapter 6, starting with verse 25. Now I'm on verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, or literally heaven, the birds of the heaven. Yeah, what we see is the first heaven. Where the angels were cast down to was the second heaven. I believe that's above the firmament. But then the Lord God Almighty and his throne and his kingdom is in the third heaven. All right. All right. So this translates it as air. The birds of the air. That they do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? Yes, you are, but yet he loves them. And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? It does you no good. It might take an hour away. And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you O oh, you of little faith, do not worry then, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. And I think that must mean heathens. Because a lot of the Gentiles... Well, Jesus is talking to the Jews, okay? Matthew was written to the Jews. The, the parts about the end of times especially pertain to the Jews. Look to the book of Luke. The parts about the end of times is for the bride. And the book of Mark is for the left behind Christians. All right, so I'm going to look up the word Gentiles, see if it also means heathens. Here it is. 1484. Ethnos. Hmm. Ethnos. I'm sure, that's where we get the word ethnic, ethnicity. All right, it means Gentiles, nation, heathen, people. So we could say the heathen. Okay, so it does mean that. A company, troop, or swarm, a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus. Okay, but heathen is what I wanted to know. All right, so let's go back. We could say for the heathens eagerly seek all these things for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you so do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will care for itself each day has enough trouble of its own so can you imagine uh can you guess what i'm thinking right now 
what I can't talk about, the thing that if you take, if you say, okay, I'm not going to take it, I'm not going to take it, but I know I'll lose my job, and then what are we going to do? We'll lose our house, and, and then I won't be able to buy you all clothes, and what will we eat? And see how that can start leading up to, well, I better go ahead and take it, sacrifice myself so I can work to feed you all. You know what I'm saying? No. You have to love Jesus Christ more than your family. There's a verse that says, anyone who loves father, mother, sister, brother, or child more than me is not worthy of the kingdom of God. All right? You can look that up if you haven't heard it. Anyone who loves mother, father, sister, brother, or child more than me is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. You have to love God most and not take that thing so you can go to heaven and be with him. Okay? You just remember that. You look to him. You trust him with all you got. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Now, there was something I meant to say. <sighs> Let me go back to the message. Okay, I have to find out where was that. Okay, that was the second to the last one. My timing is perfect. My will is spot on. Enter into my rest. All right. Uh, I'm going to put my cursor there so I don't lose my place. One of the uh, other... Okay, yeah, the first one. He's saying to forgive all the righteous act, to forgive those who have sinned against you. Yes, we still... Forgive people who hurt us. People have been asking Kathy and Dan on Team Jesus about praying for those who have, let's just say it's too late for them because they caved and gave in. Well, either their boss demanded it or or they wanted to um, travel or whatever. Um, that they are basically becoming part Nephilim, so we can't. Would you pray for a demon? Remember the message I read earlier? Those who are still human. Jesus said that. Okay, so they have found, the Team Jesus has found scriptures where in the past, in the Old Testament, God has actually told the, Gent, uh, the Israelites to stop praying for them. Don't pray for them, that kind of thing, in regards to the ones who were not his. People they had were supposed to pray for for a while, then they did something, and God said, don't pray for them anymore. You can go to Team 
Let's see. Team Jesus 222.com and you'll see their web page and you can go over three there's like little tabs you choose one to learn about it third one over is everything that has to do with this subject you know the one I mean that I can't talk about on YouTube alright and you can find out more about what I'm talking about because I'm kind of having to be mysterious and I know people don't like that but I can't talk about it on YouTube alright so let me move on to the very last word given to Robin Robinson Bolin the enemy is very subtle at times I have instructed you to live your life being transformed by the renewing of the mind. It is so easy to compromise some values and allow that transformation to slow or even stop. My words to you today are, quote, no compromise, unquote. Do not let the subtle voice of the enemy allow any deviation from the path that I have for you. My plan for you will always lead to transformation. And as, uh, that could also mean transfiguration. When we go outside of time, we get transfigured into our glorified bodies. Just as Jesus showed. Let's see. He took Peter, James, and John up on the mountain during the Feast of Tabernacles. That's why Peter said, Lord, it, w it is good for us that we should build a tabernacle for you and Moses and Elijah. And then they disappeared, and Jesus was back to his normal human self. He just wanted to show them what was coming. Now, was it dur being during transformation? I mean, tabernacles was that a was that a clue? Was that a piece of the puzzle? Maybe some people think that's why it's going to happen during tabernacles I certainly hope we don't have to wait that long because of all that's going on because Jesus said if he didn't shorten the time there'd be no flesh left alive that's what he was talking about earlier when he said if he didn't if he didn't come you will destroy yourselves and that's the truth about it I don't know how his children would but he needs to come and get things started. Don't you think so? <laughs> I think so, Lord. I think so. <laughs> but I know your ways are higher than our ways. And your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. I know it, Lord. I know it. Okay, so did I finish? Do not let the subtle voice of the enemy. Yes, my plan for you will always lead to transformation. The scripture given is from Romans 12, 2 in the NASB. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That, like I said, was given to Robin Robinson Bowling. Okay, so that's the end of all the messages from that letter. And that catches me up on the letters through today. But I've got a couple of videos I have to check out before I share. All right. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us and our devices. And this video and our internet connections. And with that... I will say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.